Well, as citizens of the state of Oklahoma, for those of our citizens who live in Oklahoma, um, the legalization or the passage of 788 leading up to the um, enactment of the law, um, the next step that I see that will affect our citizens is the probably the calling of a special session by Governor Fallon and which they will then enact regulations to uh, allow the bill to be uh, administered within the state and I'm hopeful that um, that's successful that the you know they do arrive at um, the appropriate measures they need to have in place so that everybody will feel comfortable with it and we can move on. Um, what we've done in terms of our code is look at our code in conjunction with the passage of the, uh, I think it was the bill earlier this year that allows for um, growth w associated with a university for researches, research purposes um, just for um, not the medical marijuana but uh, for hemp. And so we proceeded somewhat into that uh, matter because we've had talks with Oklahoma State University but that would require code changes as well for us. Um, however, we've not put forward any code changes that I'm aware of at this point, not from the executive branch. They would be subject to drug testing just like anybody else. Um, they would need to show us their license. It would be very similar to what we conduct now with any employee in a random drug test. If they test positive for some substance, if they have a prescription for that substance, they're fine. So with, if they uh, tested positive for a THC um, or marijuana residue at that point, we would look to see if they have a valid license in the state of Oklahoma and uh, for medical purposes. Um, well, I lived in the state of Utah when the marijuana extract oil bill was passed and that was passed um, with in a very conservative state um, because of its medical efficacy in use of preventing seizures for epileptic children in this case. And um, it passed, was signed into law. It was, I believe, time limited, so I believe that law ex expired, um, I think in 2016 or 2018, I can't remember now, but um, there are, um, possible medical, valid medical researched uses of marijuana. Um, I was an employee of the Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, we were, um, and when I left, there was speculation about us doing um, peer reviewed research in medical efficacy of marijuana, but none had proceeded at that time. And just talking to some friends of mine lately, they're still in the VA. Uh, there's a bill in Congress that allow them to conduct research, but at this point, they've not. They've collected information about research, and th the results vary widely. So um, I think that's what we will be looking at in the state of Oklahoma, just from my observation as someone that's been in the healthcare field, is what are its uses? And, it, you know, I think commonly people talk about pain, epilepsy, and things like that, cancer. Um, in relief of pain associated with cancer, with marijuana. Uh, so I think with 788, what I would be looking for is with the legislature, um, what are they trying to enact to kind of limit the scope of this? Because the opposition to the bill was very much centered around, you know, both possession in college dorms and smoking in front of us and these things, but that's regulated by other state laws. And so I think that will hopefully all clear up and then we'll see 
what will move forward. Um, so that's kind of my view on that. Well, the federal law allows tribes to grow marijuana right now. The limiting factor there has been the transportation of it off protected lands. I know that in 788, there's a, you know, the state law would allow the licensing of packaging growth and transportation. So we'll be looking very closely at that to see if that's still allowable. Um, However, in terms of the nation growing it, we've really not had any serious conversations with the council about it or the attorney general's office to assure that, um, that we wouldn't be raided by the DEA and, or something like that and lose an investment over um, some policy is, is kind of like what has been put forth by the attorney general. You know, we don't want to jeopardize anything that we have at this point, but um, I think knowing that this is an industry that has a, I think last year, $2 billion um, magnitude and projected in two years to grow to $9 billion, uh, we know that there's at least one or two tribes that are growing marijuana and um, there's an association of tribes that are looking at this as an industry. and. You know, as I spoke previously, hemp production is what we're looking at right now. The byproducts of that is protein feed for cattle. So there's a lot of uses that are non-medical for the non-THC hemp. Um, but again, 788 deals with the medical use and the licensing by a state uh, board certified physician. Um, to date, I've not had one citizen object to it. I think now with the passage of 788, you know, it's more in front of us, and I think that may bring out more viewpoints. But I think looking at it from the economic standpoint um, and seeing a, a business that's going to be seven billion dollar uh, industry and then a nine billion dollar industry in two years, um, I think that it would be wise for us to look at it. Uh, we would need to separate that from the moral objections and other things and make sure we have the, the protections in place for the security of our property, um, the sovereignty of the nation is protected, and, and then look at it from the return on investment. And if those things work out, you know, I think that we would probably consider something, but um, we've got to proceed very cautiously and um, I think um, our, we, will, we will very closely watch the proceedings of the special session of the legislature and, and, um, and participate as needed to make sure that um, we see something that would uh, follow the intent of the voters. And like I said before, more than half a million people voted on this bill. It passed by more than 122,000 votes. So certainly the popularity is there. Uh, and this, you know, I think that that can't be neglected. We hope that our legislators do a good job in following the intent of the voters in this particular issue. Again, um, upon trust property or upon reservations, tribes can grow marijuana. And we've, I've, I'm aware of two in the Northwest that uh, are on reservation land. Um, our reservation land status is, you know, in question. So we would then have to look at trust and restricted properties and see whether that qualifies. And then uh, make sure that we're in compliance with, especially with DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration. And, um, you know, those things would need to be taken into consideration and work through uh, with agreements probably in place so that we're protected before we proceed into any type of uh, growth, uh, you know, in growing the uh, marijuana or um, even processing it in any way.